Hey, Shalom Shalom Mishpocha! Welcome to another edition of Ray Bash's Ramblings. I'm your host, Rabbi Yehuda Ben Shomer, and today I'm going to be talking about Tishba Av, or the ninth of Av. Um, now, ironically, my Hebraic birth date is the eighth of Av, which goes right on the heels of the ninth of Av, which is the darkest day on the Jewish calendar. Uh, why is this? Uh, because the ninth of Av, um, anything and everything that's bad that you could ever think of happening pretty much happened to Israel on the ninth of Av. And so we're going to be uh, kind of getting into that a little bit. The Hebraic month of Av is of Babylonian origin and can be found in the Talmud around the third century. Um, it's the eleventh month of the civil year and the fifth uh, month of the ecclesiastical year. Um, in the Talmud it says in Tanit uh, 29a, when we enter the month of Av, our joy is diminished. And this is due to all the tragic events that uh, occurred in that month to the Hebrew people, especially on the ninth of Av itself, um, which back in ancient times, the ninth of Av uh, was one of the happiest days of the year, but now it's one of the, the darkest and saddest days on uh, the Hebraic calendar of, uh, of all. Av um, means father, and Av also has its roots in, in uh, the word which means to will or to desire. So during the month of Av, we Hebrew people desire um, and long after the Father because these tragedies, we feel like we've been abandoned, we feel like all alone. But really, all these tragedies and evils that have come upon us, we have to realize and understand that they're our own doing, that we've brought them upon ourselves because we have not kept our end of the covenant, because we have broken the covenant with Hashem, uh, because we have broken His Torah. And it says, uh, you know, like uh, one of the events that occurred on the ninth of Av was, was uh, the, the destruction of the temple uh, by the Babylonians and Nebuchadnezzar. And uh, it said that the temple was destroyed because of Israel's lack of love for one, of one another, our lack of love and compassion. And love is, is the baseline and the foundation for everything that we say and do as Jews. We don't keep Torah because we have to. We don't keep Torah because we feel like our arms being twisted and we're obligated to. We keep Torah because we love God and we love our people. And love is the foundation. If you don't keep the Torah out of love, you just might as well not keep it at all because it means nothing. It's just ritual rote. And when you keep the Torah out of love. It's as if you're keeping marital vows. You're keeping wedding vows. You're doing it because you love God. Um, but uh, let me just, just briefly, there's much more than this, but let me just briefly um, run down some of the things that happened um, on uh, the 9th of Av. Uh, the Exodus generation was condemned to die in the desert on the 9th of Av um, in uh, 1312 BCE. Um, the Holy Temple was destroyed. Uh, in 429 BCE and uh, um, 69 or, seven, uh, or 70 CE slash AD. Uh, so both temples, uh, there was an event called the um, Fall of Bitar, which was the last stronghold of the Bar Kokhba Rebellion, um, and that was uh, 133 CE. Um, the Jews had their expulsion from England uh, by King Edward I in uh, 1290. And there was a, the Spanish expulsion in 1492, and ironically, this is uh, you know the time when Christopher Columbus also left, and so there's some speculation indication the reason he left was because of the expulsion, but because the king and queen liked him so much that uh, they allowed him to go on this expedition as his expulsion, because a lot of his navigational charts, a lot of the people he took with him were Jewish and uh, were Hebrew. Anyway, just a little tidbit and a little footnote there. Um, so, uh, you know, there's, there's many more events that happened on Tishba Av, on the 9th of Av, and so this is a time of mourning. Um, it's, it's also known as the Black Fast, and it is accustomed to, um, it's almost like a miniature Yom Kippur where we, where we uh, forbid ourselves of any kind of luxuries, such as anointing ourselves with cosmetics and oils and, and bathing, and, and uh, we do without food, we do without uh, marital relationships with our spouses. And so uh, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's like a, uh, some make it into a 24-hour fast. Uh, so it's from sundown on the on Av eighth to nightfall on uh, Av nine, 
the ninth of Av. So it's also customary to, um, you know, to kind of sit low and to be humbled, um, not to uh, have any forms of entertainment such as television, radio, what have you, because we're supposed to be focusing on the sins that have been committed that resulted in the the destruction of the temple and uh, you know how we brought this thing upon ourselves. So it's kind of a, a time of of, uh, of mourning. Um, but uh, let me read Jeremiah 31, 13. It says, Then shall maidens dance gaily, young men and old alike. I will turn their mourning to tear, or their mourning to joy. I will comfort them and cheer them in their grief. And in uh, uh, Peskta, uh, Rabita 28, 4, it says, Abia said, Joy will come to us on Tishbaav, for in the future the Holy One will make that day a holiday as it is said I will turn your mourning to joy so it is kind of been speculated that uh, the Jewish people will win a, a, either a great victory or that even the messianic age will be ushered in on the ninth of Av to make up for all the sadness and all the tragedy that happened on that dark day and just as it was a bright and festive day in ancient times so too in the future time again it will be a bright and festive day um, so Tish B'Av will be turned into not a day of fasting, but a day of feasting. And so we look forward to that. Now, uh, tears are greatly associated with, with uh, Tish B'Av because of mourning, because of fasting. And so um, I would like to read to you something that I wrote the other day about tears. In the weekday prayer during uh, Takanun, uh, prayer, recitation, we pray based on Psalm 6. Um, desist Hashem, release my soul, and save me as befits your kindness. For there is no mention of you in death. In the lower world, who will thank you? I am weary with sigh. Every night I drench my bed. With, with my tears I soak my couch. Uh, you know, we cry when we're happy. We cry when we're sad. We cry when we're angry and frustrated. And we cry when we simply don't know uh, what else to say or what else to do. And our tears, like snowflakes, um, are individualistic and special so special to God that he logs them and collects them. Psalm 56, 8 says, um, Thou tellest my wanderings, thou put my tears into thy bottle, and they and are they not in thy book? Psalm 35, uh, 30, verse 5 says, Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. So the Messianic age is, is also portrayed as like a dawn, a new dawning. So joy will come in the morning. In the Babylonian Talmud, uh, Bava uh, Metzia, 59a, it's recorded, even when the gates of prayer is locked, the gates of tears is open. Like laughter, uh, tears is also a universal language to man and to God. But tears go beyond language and express thoughts and feelings we can't seem to put into coherent order. The tears are translated by the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, because in Romans 8.26 it says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And a lot of times we cry, we, oh, we groan when we cry. Tears remind me of crystals that are often used in uh, science fiction shows and are used to store and relay information. Tears, like crystals, are clear and they carry information. Physically, they carry our DNA, the essence of who we are as mortal individuals. And spiritually, like in many sci-fi shows, they carry information, more specifically prayers, groanings which cannot be uttered. Whether we get misty-eyed or our tears flow like a busted dam, for whatever reason, God is there. He sees and knows um, just what we can't seem to say, and he answers rightly according to his will. So that's all the time we have for today. So thanks for watching. Shalom, Shavuot Tov, and have an easy fast on Tishba'av. Bye-bye.